Yeah. We're at the blue dot. You're at the blue dot and you're looking out at all that development down there. We're on top of the hill. So this line of trees, you can see the line of trees is right, right there. This is the 1946 <coughs> era photo. This is the 1982 air photo. So the basic problem here with trying to find the fault is that all of this development was done um, and they just came and trashed all the little subtle geomorphic features like we were looking at at the last stop to tell us exactly where the fault is. So we've been doing a pretty extensive uh, project of going through all of the historical records, looking at the pre-development, aerial photography, all the information that we can get to try to find out exactly where the fault traces were. Now this particular spot, <coughs> there is quite a bit of information and we're quite confident of our fault location. This is a photograph taken in 1906. Um, there is a lot of information in that photograph, including, as Tom points out, you can get a sense of what the displacement actually was by the guy standing there with his arms held out. But the main trace of the fault, of course, is, is right there, offsetting the fence, in this case it's across not a very wide zone, very different from the last offset fence we were looking at. Here it happened over a very narrow zone. But there are actually several traces. If you look at this photograph carefully, you'll notice that the fence is offset again back here, so there's another fault trace there. <laughs> and if you've got a really good eye, you'll notice that there's another small one back here, another fault trace. So there were actually three distinct fault traces here. There's no way we would know that if we didn't have that photograph. This is a photograph of the same fence taken by USGS geologist uh, Doc Bonilla in 1956. Very same fence from basically the exact same place. So 50 years after the earthquake, you could still see that displacement, at least on the main trace. You really couldn't see the, the other traces so well, but you could definitely still see the displacement on the main trace there 50 years after the earthquake. So this photograph was taken by Doc Bonilla in 1956 from exactly where we're standing now. 1962, he took another photograph from the very same place, and that's what it looked like. And what you could get a sense of from comparing these two photographs, which were taken in exactly the same spot, is how much earth they moved to put in this <laughs> development. So you can actually still see some of these very houses down there. If you look carefully, yeah, this guy, this house is the yellow one. So the, the yellow house there um, is actually underneath the house. That's actually the one right here. And the fault, so the fault trace is just on the other side of that street down there. It's coming obliquely across. All of these new condos here, are, or new townhouses, were built here. <laughs> um, yeah, if I had one of those houses, I would definitely get it. Earthquake insurance, I think. Um, although, I, you know, I don't know enough about the details of earthquake insurance to know if it would even cover fault displacement. It might not. <laughs> Somewhere, roughly. Oh, where where does it yeah. does it lie? Yeah, it's coming. Oh, no, right like through where that house is. Down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Long time since the since really the 19th century, people who have built wooden houses because of the things we put in our house and because we require there not to be deflections, we tend to end up with houses that are very strong compared to their uh, com compared to their weight. So we say they're flexible, but that's really not the key issue. They tend to be extremely strong compared with their weight, and because of that, they are very resilient in earthquakes, and they have another property that we would call ductility. So once you do crack the, the plaster in the wall, or once you start to pull nails in the house, it just, just doesn't collapse into a rubble. It, it stays together. I've never seen a crack in a 7-Eleven store. Uh, it short. Uh, reinforced <laughs> concrete buildings tend to be extremely resilient against earthquake too. Uh, earthquakes too. If you made a high-rise 7-Eleven store, that might be a different story, but <laughs> but uh, they don't generally do that. Yeah, it's really just the ones that are right on top of the fault that are going to suffer. I actually have seen houses that are literally within centimeters of, of the ground rupture, and they're fine. Yeah, so our houses the ones that are, are actually right across them, they're not going to be fine. So
Oh, this cool. is the slip joint for this building. Really? So the building is is uh, is isolated from the ground. You're on the unisolated part, and we're on the isolated part. And when the earthquake happens, uh, it this rolls. Oh, shovel good. under your feet because the, <laughs> the building, the ground's going to move more than the building. So right now, this whole building's floating on a couple of hundred rubber discs of the kind that will go up to see it. There's not much space between the foundation under the building and the, and the rest of the building. So there's a little uh, door in the base of the building and a few people at a time can go down and shine the flashlight and see the isolators. And it goes down uh, a, a little step ladder, and we'll have to be very careful going down the step ladder. It's quite fascinating to look at. <laughs> We're going to go up to the first floor first, and they've got a cutaway of one of the isolators itself. Um, the, the isolators in buildings typically can take a strain of about one, meaning the tilts about one. So. Again, the issue was uh, what is the free period of this building and what's the total strain that can be done in this isolator. And I couldn't find that on the internet. When, when we go upstairs, maybe we can take a look at the isolator that's up there and get some idea. The bottom goes on, on the floor. The, the building's on the top. I think the ones that we, we see down there will probably be uh, maybe twice this size. And, uh, and you'll see uh, there's steel plates here and then there's uh, sandwiches of, uh, of rubber uh, and the rubber of course is where the shearing is and the steel plates are there to keep everything horizontal. It's almost like it's a, spring, a, a solid body on a spring. The lead also absorbs energy. The lead is there uh, to give it uh, lead detectable material. It keeps it from vibrating when uh, there's no load on it. And, and so here's a fault that's going to uh, have, well, in 1906, in this part of the world, it was probably about three and a half, four meters. It was this oh, this yeah. yeah. It's something in that range. We don't really know what the next one's going to be. People would sometimes say, well, if the last one was three and a half or four, the next one will be the same. But to be honest, we don't actually know that for sure. This whole plane will be moving, and now we want to figure out how much the ground is actually going to move here. We can make numerical simulations of that, but to be honest, uh, even uh, we're human beings, and uh, there's a lot we don't know about this problem. Uh, and uh, the simulations I showed you this morning are our best uh, attempts at that. We can only really do those kinds of simulations in the last five years with supercomputers. But I would be uh, very arrogant to tell you that we really know what the next earthquake is going to look like here. And uh, notice, notice how much space there is. I'm not all that tall, so. Are you standing on the floor? I am standing on the floor. <laughs> okay, so when you come on down, we'll take a look. But I want to get a picture. I hope it's filming. Is it a movie or a... Yeah, okay. it's a movie. So it's not much higher, but it's clearly... Oh, it's wider. I'd say it's more than a meter in diameter, wouldn't you say? Well, that's it over there. Uh, they might be worried about fire. Yeah, what's your head here? Um, no, I'm just like, what's this? Turn around a bit.